Hi. Welcome to another movie plot. Spoilers ahead. Moses versus the monsters. A nurse named Samantha walks home through a crime-ridden neighborhood in South London. Hi, Mom. She chats away to her mother while getting further and further away from the public eye. Just as she ends the call she comes up on a gang of teenagers, dressed head to toe for no good. Half the gang circle behind her so she can't run away, while their leader mugs her of her valuables. Eventually being pushed to the ground she finally hands over her ring. Take care. Just then an object burning into the atmosphere crashes into a parked car, allowing Sam time to escape. The opportunistic gang leader Moses it. sees this as a chance to steal from the glove box. But he is attacked by a creature from within the car, clawing at him and leaving a scratch on his face. He pulls his knife out and stabs it, causing it to flee in pain through the nearby park. Wanting revenge Moses chases the creature down and corners it in a shed, where Pest uses firecrackers to disorientate it and Moses goes in after it, Smile. eventually being joined by his friends. After beating it to death they now realize it's something exotic that's come from space, alien, bro. and begin chanting as if they've just saved Earth, not realizing the approaching danger. At the 20-story Wyndham Tower a distraught Sam arrives back home after a rough night. While dragging the alien around the block Dennis strips Sam's purse, Jerome brags about the kill, and Biggs gets a call from his mom to come home. Dennis notices that Sam is a nurse, and gives Moses shit for stealing from low wage earners. <laughs> the gang come across their female equivalent led by Tia, but naturally none of them believe that the creature is real. Fuck, the gang leave and Biggs teases a high-risk jump across a stairwell, but never does it. We meet two young wannabe thugs named Mayhem and Props, who want to roll with Moses and the crew but are too small for big boy business. Go suck your mom. The gang all live in Wyndham Tower with their parents and legal guardians, and bring the alien to the top floor to show their dealer Ron in hopes of getting some more info. They sit around discussing ways to make a profit from it, where we meet one of Ron's regular customers Bruce. <laughs> Wanting to keep the alien in Ron's grow room for safety, Moses is told he will have to ask the boss. Inside we meet Hi-Hats, local rapper slash drug dealer, telling Moses that he can leave it there, but says he is old enough now to work for him. My boy now. He gives him some of his product to sell and tells him that this is Hi-Hat's block. My bro. Moses gets praise from the boys for finally getting recruited, but is suddenly alerted to more aliens. The gang watches more creatures come raining down from the sky throughout the city. Them things are pure coming down. But get hyped up about the money they could make and all race off to prove how tough they are. Quite sweet really, aren't they? While the boys grab weapons from their homes we see that they all have caring families who don't know what they get up to at night, though we don't see Moses's. Dennis's dad tells him to take Pogo for a walk, but once the gang reach the nearest meteor site they see that it has cracked open already and the creature fled. But that's different. This time though the alien looks to be three times the size of the last, and shows itself when Pogo tries to protect its owner but fails. A large black fur alien approaches the gang, with light emitting eyes that turn out to be its teeth. So they all flee on their bikes leaving props and mayhem as they cross paths, and ignoring the police as they get chased down the street. When Biggs jumps off the bike Moses stacks it and is caught by the two cops, instantly finding Hi-Hat's product. We see that Sam has identified the mugger to the officers, and the boys all watch on as two aliens approach the scene. Moses is handcuffed and put in the police van, as the officers suddenly are both hit from different directions and killed. Since Sam and Moses can do nothing but wait, Pest uses a firework to distract the aliens giving Dennis time to ride into the cloud and make it into the van, kicking a space dog away. As he lets Moses out of the holding cell in the back, Sam puts herself in it to protect her from both the aliens and the gang. The boys decide to jack the van and run over an alien as they leave the scene. But before getting far they crash head first into a car driven by high hats, so they let Sam out of the cell and she runs home. Being out for blood, Hats threatens to kill Moses in front of his boy Tonks, but the gang all arrive to protect their own. They decide to try to explain the situation to him, obviously not believing the alien story he is soon made aware when one approaches them from behind. The brave Hi-Hat sends his man to check it out, as he holds the much bigger threat at gunpoint. When Tonks is struck by the gorilla wolf and has his neck ripped out, Hi-Hats decides to unload a clip on him. Using this moment the gang escape and leave Hats by himself. We also see that it was Bruce's car that was hit by the initial meteor mutt. Dennis cuts the handcuffs off Moses, and they decide the best course of action is just go back to the block and wait for everything to blow over. Taking whatever transport they can, they begin to race home with aliens coming out of everywhere in pursuit. Biggs and Jerome are separated by one that chooses to go for Biggs, but he comes up on the stairs from earlier and makes the leap. So does the dog though. But he manages to make it into an alien-proof garbage bin just in time. The rest of the group all make it back into Wyndham Tower except for Pest. 
who crashes his bike right in front of one of the creatures and has to use it as a weapon to get away. Sprinting towards the doors he just manages to make it inside. But the alien chomps down on his leg. Thankfully they aren't bat proof and Pest swats it away. But more break into the block. At the same time Sam is just getting back to her first floor apartment, and to her nightmare the muggers once again burst their way into her life. Thinking they're there to harm her she demands they leave, but they say they just need her nursing expertise for Pest's leg. Sam argues with them saying that she won't help them, but they assure her that they are on the same side now. When Moses removes the batteries in the phone and tells her no police she is forced to treat Pest's leg. Fix him. She tells them that Pest has severed some minor arteries and needs surgery. We should take him off. And that she has only lived in the block for a few months but is thinking of moving. Mm. A bang at the door suddenly gets the team alert, and Moses goes to check it out to see a space dog knocking. It smashes into the apartment through a window, but Moses takes up Dennis's sword and puts it through the side of the creature's head. Ninja. They finally have a good look at the creature under a light and see that it's blacker than anything they've ever seen before. That's blacker than my cousin Femi. When she gets a chance, Sam tries to slip away but hears more alien screams, and decides to stick with them for safety. I'm coming with the you. gang agrees after Pest convinces the others that being a nurse she can still be needed. They all head upstairs to Tia's apartment while getting a call from Biggs to confirm he's alive. I'm in the bin. On the way to the room they cross paths with Reginald and Gavin again. The nine and a half year old thugs are now armed, appearing to have a super soaker but claiming it's not water. They say the alien ignored them in the park but Moses tells them to stay inside tonight anyway. Dimples tries to steer the boys away from the apartment but Tia lets them all in, and we see the security gate that Moses brought them there for. The girls are all skeptical still, but Sam says they can check her living room for proof. When Tia opens a window the group are startled by the creature staring back at them. Dennis tries to shoot them with a gun he took from Mayhem but it turns out to be just a toy, so an alien smashes through the window and bites into his helmet. Moses is forced to hide as a second comes in, and listens to his friend call for him before getting his head ripped clean off. Tia leads one of them into a room where her and Dimples beat the shit out of it with a pole and ice skate, while Moses deals with the other. Though getting the sword stuck in the wall he requires Sam to save him with a knife. At this time Hi-Hats arrives at the building, and as the gang all mourn Dennis the girls recognize that the aliens are just after Moses, assuming for killing the small one. Moses tells them they should all leave him for their own safety which the girls agree, but his boys want revenge for Dennis. When Hi-Hats shows up and begins shooting at them Sam is forced to stay with them as well. But an alien intercepts him outside of Tia's room, and brushes off his bullets as it chases him back into the elevator. Leaving his dealer's home Bruce runs into a still living Hi-Hats having killed the monster, so he takes the other lift. Reaching Tia's floor he is then intercepted by the Moses gang who send the elevator straight back up to Ron's. What's Ron's weed room? It's a big room full of weed, and it's Ron's. It's good. Arriving at the floor they see two aliens fighting in the hallway and require more fireworks to distract them. As they sneak through the hall though Jerome falls behind, and gets taken by a dog as the rest make it to Ron's apartment. They enter to Hats wanting revenge for Moses bringing the monsters to Wyndham Tower. When Hats reminds him whose block this is Moses says not really, and lets the new owners consume him. Moses Pest Bruce Ron and Sam are the only ones to reach the safety of the grow room. Bruce notices pheromones on Moses' jacket under the UV light and concludes that the first alien must be a female, and the black ones are males attracted to her scent. They also realize that the aliens are blind, and use sound and smell to hunt. Meanwhile Biggs is still trapped in the garbage bin by an alien, and has props and mayhem come to the rescue. They spray the alien down with the super soaker and set the creature on fire, having been filled with petrol but flee when the police arrive and join Biggs in the bin. Yeah. Coming up with a plan, the survivors check that Sam doesn't have any of the pheromone on her. Then Moses makes Pest return her ring. Thanks. Sam sneaks straight past all the creatures not making a sound and goes to Moses' empty apartment, where she sees he's just a 15-year-old who lives with an uncle that's never yeah. around. She opens the gas valves to his stove and leaves the building. Allow it. Moses then straps the dead female alien to his back, and runs through the block to his apartment with all the aliens close on his heels. He throws the female near the stove where all the males follow, and fires a rocket into the gas-filled kitchen, blowing the apartment and all the male aliens to smithereens. Moses survives the explosion by hanging onto a flag on the balcony, and gets arrested along with the others. They get carted off to jail in front of the whole block with Moses getting to see that Big survived, and Sam tells the police that they saved her life. Moses and Pest sit in the cell as they hear the crowd chant Moses' name, and he knows that he has finally done something good. And the movie ends. Attack the Block is a 2011 science fiction comedy horror written and directed by Joe Cornish.
fucking monsters, isn't they? Cornish was required to remove 15 pages of script prior to filming, due to budgetary constraints. Fucking monsters. Most of the teenage actors were found through their schools and online open audition. You fucking hero. Quentin Tarantino included Attack the Block in his list of 10 best films of 2011. Whatever the fuck they are, they're not fucking alien. You swear too much, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. You got a potty mouth, man. Yeah. Yeah.